What's up everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net, and behind me you can see a gorgeous 1992 Cadillac Brome D Elegance 5.7 liter, gorgeous, gorgeous example of the last year this car was ever offered. This multi-decade run from 1977 till 1992 ended with this beautiful girl right here. So 92 came out of the Pacific Northwest and this car is going to be a little bit of a lesson to us all, well, to some maybe who don't understand, that, well, I'll tell you the lesson in the video. You're going to watch it. I appreciate it. Let's get into it. And here she is, an absolutely gorgeous example of the last year that this beautiful body style was manufactured by Cadillac Motor Company. 1992. Cadillac Brome de elegance, de elegance, de elegance, however you pronounce it, that's what it is. She's finished in a beautiful cotillion white over navy blue leather. And this is a monotone paint treatment car on the outside, meaning it has the lower panels done uh, in a monotone or cotillion white as well. Uh, very, very unique. I, I love the triple white on the outside with a monotone lower cladding is white white top white body uh, it's a pretty sharp combination uh, actually my first brome was in that combination and that was the brome that has made me fall in love with bromes I, well there was other bromes that made me fall in love with bromes but that brome was my first brome <laughs> anyways we'll get into the video here this is a 59,000 mile example, 5.7 liter V8, uh, well documented, well serviced, well cared for car. Uh, this car came out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, two owner car, lived in Oregon, sold new at Vic Alfonso Cadillac, which just so happens to be where my 1975 Eldorado was sold new at. Uh, second owner was a collector, is who I acquired the car from. Uh, he had this car in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, and I was very excited to get an opportunity to buy this car and get this car out here. And I kind of learned something of kind of a mythical, you know, used car, classic car myth out there that I knew, but I had just never experienced until I bought this car. When this car came out of the Pacific Northwest, um, I was always told that that is like the best area for old cars um, as far as preserving them as far as climate as far as everything and this car is a shining example of that at 59,000 miles she's obviously not the lowest mileage car that I've ever had uh, but at 59,000 miles it's surprisingly one of the cleanest most well-preserved, well, preserved, well uh, everything nice <laughs> examples I've ever had. And the lesson that I was kind of touching on at the beginning of the video uh, was going to be this, that mileage does not necessarily depict condition or you can't judge mileage off condition. Because in this case, at 59,000 miles, um, this is, you know... Not a 20,000 mile car, but I will say, because I know, that this 59,000 mile Pacific Northwest preserved beauty is nicer than some of my cars that I've had with half the mileage. Even my own personal cars. I have a 90 Brome that's the same color combination as this. A 5.7 liter car with blue de-elegance interior. Same mileage, 59,000 mile car. Go on my website. You'll see pictures of it. Car was a North Carolina car its whole life. Nowhere near as nice as this car is. And it's just, it's in the details that you cannot really portray until you compare the two next to each other. Um, condition of weather stripping, rubbers, um, undercarriage. Well, North Carolina cars are clean. I don't, don't want to take that away. This car has the original filler panels on it. And not only they're original and beautiful, they're original and nearly perfect. I mean, gloss, usually these things are starting to kind of cloud up. When they cloud up, 
that's when they're going to start to de decompose or fall apart. Even the ones under the license plate. I can't remember the last time that I've had a brome that I have not had to replace at least those two uh, fillers. The most common, yep, I didn't forget the finger. The most common two fillers to go bad on these cars, right underneath the gas tank, one of them's flat. The quarter ones usually last a little longer, but these, look, you can see a gloss on that silver. And that's not repainted, that is original filler panel. It's phenomenal how nice this car is. This car is nicer, this car is nicer than the 10,000 mile 90 Brome D Elegance I have in my own collection. And that car was a Nevada and Hawaii car its whole life. This car is by far cleaner all the way around than that 10,000 mile car. So the lesson is don't judge a car necessarily by its odometer because I've had cars that were not nearly as nice as this one with less miles and I've had cars that have higher mileage. I had a silver or a charcoal gray 92 that I sold last fall, 75,000 miles was a phenomenal example of a Brome. This is right up there with it, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a walk around video of this car, or walk around and show you some of the flaws, minor defects with this car, very, very minor. I mean, you can see here, just the quality of the chrome, absolutely beautiful, stunning chrome. I mean, look at that. That bright work, you cannot duplicate the bright work. Um, headlight bezels, nice deep gloss. In that chrome, the, the lenses are not all sandblasted. Emblems have a beautiful color and depth to them. Little stuff like that, you know, just go hand in hand. I mean, inside the wheel wells, you see, look at how beautiful the stainless is. All the way around, you can see the screws, you know, just not gummed up or gunky. Hubcaps are absolutely beautiful. All around, phenomenal example even all the stainless and bright work around the windows. So let's do a little uh, in-depth walk around, show you a few minor, minor flaws. Now this car is, I mean, when I say minor, minor, we're gonna start on this corner here, beautiful cotillion white throughout, navy blue painted pinstripe, uh, common com combination with these cars with navy blue leather, all the lines and the gaps are absolutely beautiful, nice and straight. Lenses are absolutely perfect. Uh, I did refinish these front bumper impact strips. Honestly, I did the rear one because it had a little scratch in it. The rear one came out so good, I said I gotta do the front ones. Because these ones just had a couple little minor scuffs on the corner, but very acceptable. But they came out absolutely beautiful. Took those off. I did a little short video uh, on my channel here to show you how to take those off. Uh, the front bumperettes are in really, really nice shape. All the bright work around the grill. Grill itself is in nice shape. Real cool, unique thing with this car, and I wish this was in some of my other cars. Uh, I don't know if any of you folks remember back in the day, this was obviously an easy target for theft, the hood ornament. Now this hood ornament is wired for sound. That's right. This car has a hood ornament alarm, so if you go and swing this any which way and it makes contact on the spring, it'll sound the four note trumpet horn, which is absolutely cool. I did not know it had that until I saw some wiring under the hood that I wasn't overly familiar with. Uh, two little tiny Audi dings you can see, one there, one minor one right there, just poking out. I've seen that before on these cars, and I think there's like a nut or a bolt under there. And obviously someone must have put some pressure on this to create that little Audi ding, we'll say. A few minor stone chips on the front fascia here that were touched up. Kind of hard to see uh, with the sun, but you can see the gloss there or the, the depth in the chrome. Absolutely beautiful chrome on this car. I wish the chrome was as nice on some of my cars. Another freshly re, uh, repainted front bumper impact strip. Come around the corner here, very nice throughout. All the front fillers, beautiful. Again, all the chrome here, very, very nice. You have the headlamp monitors, come down the hood. Very bright uh, stainless, all the stainless. You can tell this car was garaged 
because when these cars aren't garaged, this stainless here starts to get a little bit of cloudy effect to it, which can be polished. But I'll tell you, it's an absolute pain in the butt to polish all this, uh, to bring it back to this beautiful former glory. Uh, but so I can tell this is original. There's no inconsistencies, you know, where you couldn't get behind a mirror or something like that. Uh, another little defect here is a little chip touched up on the hood. You can see that right there. Uh, aside from that, on the hood, very, very nice shape. All inside the fender. Again, look at how bright, even inside, where all the road kick up would be, you know, <laughs> obviously we got pollen. But look at how nice that bright work is down there. Uh, beautiful set of Hankook Optimos. Now, this car was serviced very, very well by the gentleman that I bought it from. Uh, these tires are day coded, uh, let's see, the fifth week of 2018. Very nice, chunky Hankook Optimos. Beautiful locking wire disc caps. Uh, even has little Cadillac uh, insignias on the valve stem caps. Come down the driver's door here. Very, very nice chrome, like I said, throughout the car. Even the trim around the windows, very, very nice. All the weather stripping, no cracking. Very common to start to see that cracking on especially Southern cars. Um, these rubber window sweeps just start to deteriorate and dry out. Coming up over the vinyl top, beautiful shape as well. The original vinyl top to this car. All the stitching all the way across. There's no marks or anything like that. No defects in the top. Nice bright emblems. The Cadillac crest built in Texas by Texans. Very proud Texas built car. Uh, come back up to the door here. See all the lower cladding, nice shape. A few little marks or chips that were probably touched up right here on this edge. And a same as well on the door edge guard. You can see a few little marks and a you know, bumps where it was touched up. A uh, little bit, oop, a little bit of a ding right there, right on the edge of that stainless. Uh, you can see the chrome door handles, beautiful shape. Come down here, again, nice and clean, nice and consistent. Beautiful door handles, lower cladding. Again, all inside the wheel arches, very, very clean. Uh, another Hankook hand -cook Optimo tire wrapped up around a beautiful wire disc hubcap come down the quarter here a little bit of a chip right there there's a touch-up chip right there all the lower cladding there beautiful the original brome de elegance emblems even has the original vinyl taped uh, stripe on the quarter fillers now these cars came from the factory the stripe down the sides were painted on by the factory the filler panels, this is actually a one piece taped on um, pinstripe. Uh, they didn't paint the quarter extensions. Now with this one, you can see a few little stress cracks and this isn't stress cracking in the filler. This is in the paint. I'm assuming maybe this was bumped at one point before but popped back out and there was a little pressure put on it. You can very faintly see it, very faint. But the fillers themselves are still, I'll come around here, nice and strong, nice and supple. Come up over the deck lid, phenomenal shape, beautiful la uh, base clear on this car. Another reason why I like the 91, 92 Bromes better uh, is because they have the base clear. Very, very easy to work with and much more forgiving uh, than the 90 Bromes where they had the uh, lacquer paint. Lacquer was the last year, 1990. I have five 90 bromes. I have five 1992 bromes in my personal collection. All but one are 90s. So my white 90s got lacquer check. My red 90s got a little bit of check. My gold 90 had a, was a complete repaint at one point, probably for lacquer check. And then my other white 90 is phenomenal. It's like this, it's never seen daylight, I don't think, because that's essentially what creates the checking. Um, beautiful color in that trunk lock. Push that, works perfectly. Now again, coming back to the chrome. The chrome on this car is absolutely gorgeous. 
beautiful European style taillights with the white inserts. But look at the depth in the chrome. Now these little details you don't really kind of pick up on unless you're right next to the car or you have another one to, to compare it to. But just for instance, this area here, very common for people to put their foot up on or to sit on or to, you know, put a package on here. Then I'm going to open the trunk and it drives me nuts when I see people all, you know, put their feet up on it because the sand on the bottom of your feet, any kind of dirt that's built up on the back of the bumper, it's basically like sandpaper on the chrome. And this car, absolutely gorgeous. At 59,000 miles, again, the chrome, the quality, the paint on this car could qualify this car for much lower mileage. Beautiful blue pinstripe throughout the trunk, also factory. Stripe, stripe, stripe. So when I look at these cars and I see inconsistencies, like there's no stripe on the trunk, but stuff like that, that's when you know, you know, something's going on. Maybe the car was repainted. Not that that's a bad thing. Like I said, my 90 has been repainted, uh, but it's a gorgeous car done in base clear uh, because it was a lacquer car. Uh, rear bumper impact strip, like I said, I just refinished that. It had a little bit of a scratch right here in the center, but all the chrome on the bottom here, very, very nice. License plate filler is beautiful. Just a few little scuff marks in the corners, probably from like a license plate bracket or something or frame that was under here when somebody opened and closed the license plate. Uh, has that emblem that everybody wants to see. The 5.7 liter V8. Uh, again, just look at, look at the depth of the chrome on this car. Doing my best to really show you the quality of this car. Now this piece, I noticed this kind of as I was going out the door and I forgot to swap it out. But this piece of stainless bezel here, you can see a few little scuff marks and very light dings on it. I'm going to replace that. I have plenty of them at my shop. I ran out the door and I totally forgot to swap that out uh, on this car. But again, look at that. Beautiful chrome work on this car. Again, your consistent stripe. Now, I do know that this car has had some paint work done on this side. I believe door quarter, um, definitely cosmetic type of re repair. And I think it was done a long, long time ago. There's nothing that shows on the Carfax report, but I could tell just a little inconsistency uh, with the pinstripe. Um, the other thing that I noticed, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, right down here, you can see a little bit of a line but it looks like there's a little bit of maybe the clear coat lifted off down here, right on the edge. The reason why I say I think this was done a long time ago is because the quality of the paint and the condition of the paint matches the rest of the car. There's no paint match issues. Um, they went ahead and painted the stripe back on the car. And then even this emblem, this emblem has, uh, I believe is a replacement emblem because this was not taken off and retaped. You can see the consistency behind. It's kind of hard to see that this is original backing on this emblem. It's not been re-glued. So I believe it was a time where you could still get new GM emblems for this car. So this was probably done in the early 90s, but very, very straight down the side. I mean, not wavy or anything at all. Uh, you can see it there. She's real, real straight. So probably some type of cosmetic, you know, even the filler panel still has the original stripe on it. It hasn't been cleared over. So probably a small repair done on this car from grandma backing into something. Me being totally, totally transparent uh, with the condition of this car. All the chrome here is in beautiful shape. Brome de Elegance emblem. Like I said, beautiful stripe painted on this car down the side. Another nice hand cook Optimo. It's a little Cadillac crest there. Beautiful hubcaps on this car uh, as well. Get out of here, bug. Again, look at that beautiful shine. That, that's an original sheen on that vinyl top. Not lathered up with dressing or any kind of grease or whatever. Uh, that's the original sheen on this car. Definitely a garaged for life car. 
Um, and if someone's going to apply to purchase this car from me, you better have a garage. Otherwise, I don't want to sell you this car. This car deserves to remain in this pampered-like condition. Um, and honestly, if you, if you keep it in this pampered-like condition, the value of these cars are just going up. Uh, beautiful chrome and stainless throughout here. Window sweeps, absolutely gorgeous. Again, down the side here. Nice and straight. Lower cladding is in great shape. And down the door. Lower cladding over here. Beautiful, whoop, beautiful chrome. And depth in those mirrors. Original power antenna, fully functional. Chrome wheel arch moldings are in really nice shape. Again, really nice chunky Hankook Optimo tires. Beautiful chrome caps. Again, all inside the wheel arches, nice and clean. This is not an original glass. Uh, replacement glass, I can tell it's not a PPG glass. But done very, very well. All the molding and trim. Excuse me, put right back in place where it's supposed to. All right, 20 minutes <laughs> into the walk around. I know this one's going to be a long one, but this car is absolutely deserving of it. So let's jump into the inside now. All right, diving on to the inside of the Caddy here. And you can see a gorgeous blue leather. Now the quality and upkeep on the outside transfers onto the inside as well. I mean, just overall quality and condition all throughout this whole entire car. Uh, like I said, is of that of a car with half the mileage is what I normally see. Uh, but a beautiful blue de-elegance interior. All right, let's get into the interior. Inside the jams here, you can see an old sticker, probably an oil change sticker uh, at some point. Nice and clean door jams, no rust or corrosion. Nice and bright sill plates. Hinge covers. And then all the gaskets are nice. You can see here, nice cushy gaskets throughout. I will say it's kind of odd, this guy here, it's a little kind of funky. Uh, but I've driven this car, I don't get any wind noise from it, so uh, it's been like that obviously for quite some time. Uh, blue, beautiful, uh, bleh, beautiful blue uh, throughout. Got the little Cadillac crests on the door locks, 9092 only. Again, door panel armrest, very common spot for these things to crack. Um, a lot of people just, you can't find the replacements. I've hoarded away a few of these, so if I ever get a car that they're cracked, I can replace it, but I haven't had to replace one in quite some time. Uh, just, you know, people take care of the cars uh, that I, or I like to buy the cars that people take care of, and that's one of the things. Uh, all the chrome trim. A little bit of uh, some delamination inside the buttons there, uh, but all the uh, functions work. I did just service both power recliners. Both of those were inoperable, now work perfectly fine. All the carpeting is nice throughout, hinges, all that stuff. Uh, beautiful dash pad, no cracks. Very common for these to start cracking again if they're left outside. All the chrome and bright work around the vents and trim. This is stuff that you cannot restore on one of these cars. You can paint a car, you can put a new top on it, but you can't, especially the interior of these. They're so intricate and so detailed. You know, all the chrome around these um, switches, all around the um, vents and stuff like that, you cannot duplicate. So to find them that are nice like this, they need to be cherished and kept nice like this. Uh, beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel, very, very nice, beautiful shape. We'll show you all that stuff up close. Uh, all the carpeting, very, very clean. Uh, even the high traffic area here. Now I flipped over there. Uh, right up on the sill here, in really nice shape. Leather shows really nice for 59000 Nice and soft. Padding is great. Back support is absolutely beautiful. Let me zoom out there. You can see. A little bit of color loss, like I've pointed out on a lot of these bromes. It's just how they stitch these seats. When they come to this edge here, it's kind of a little bit of a ridge almost. And that's just, as people get in and out, it kind of takes the color off. But 
no splits or you know bad seams or anything like that. Headliner was just replaced. Open up this back door here. Nice and clean throughout there. No rust. All inside the jam. Rear package tray, shelf. Very nice. Again, all the door gaskets. I've never felt door gaskets so soft as the gaskets that are on this car. And again, just where this car was and how it was loved. Inside the ashtrays, you can tell there are no grandkids in the back of this one. Putting bubble gum wrappers or anything like that. All the wood trim toning. Beautiful, beautiful shape. I do these videos to really kind of do these cars a service, but at the same time, sometimes the videos do not really depict the true beauty of these cars. I think I noticed there's a little ding here and a ding there uh, in this sill plate. I don't know how that happens. I mean, obviously the back seat of this car wasn't heavily used, but a couple little dings there. I probably got one of these at my shop. Probably got many of these at my shop. I'll, uh, I'll look into replacing that before the car leaves. Carpeting is in really, really nice shape throughout. Seat back pockets, nice. Not all stretched out and elastic. El uh, <laughs> they didn't lose their elasti elast elasticity. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. Beautiful leather throughout this whole car. Very, very nice. And whoever did the headliner did a great job on doing so. All right, jump over the passenger side here. Open this one up, and again, nice and soft. Coming through the door jam. Nice and clean. Up in here. Beautiful dark blue. I love this color combination on these cars. F2, 90 bromed elegances in the white over blue. One of them has a silver lower cladding. One of them has the white monotone of the de-elegance script in here. But again, just really everything is just fit and finish. Quality is absolutely perfect. Seat backs nice and clean. Rear reading lamps. That up there in the center is the rear um, light monitor. Again, nicely done headliner. You can see that center map light, one of the lights I don't think it's burned out. It's, I'm starting to see this often with these. Is for some reason the little clicky part to turn it on it loses its click. So one of them still working. You really got to tear the things apart, and you can't get parts to fix them. And I just really they haven't really bothered me enough to really get into that that deep. Um, I don't think it's a burned out bulb. Like I said, they they do have like a little click to them to turn them on leather is absolutely gorgeous here open up this door again beautiful rubber I don't know if these are like quality control little color marks there inside the jam here now you can still see the anodizing nice and clean it's exactly what we like to see Beautiful door uh, panel seat belt, even though everybody hates the design. It was the government that ruins everything with these cars. Beautiful door panel here. All the chrome, nice and clean. And again, seats do exactly what they're supposed to. Both recliners, like I said, have been serviced and are in fine working order now. Dash pad, again, nice and clean. And again, the chrome and, and gloss on all these little knobs and trim bits, hard to duplicate. Blue is absolutely one of my favorite combinations. Nice and soft, beautiful supple leather throughout this car. It's even the center console here. Sometimes you start to see the seams start to come apart. I mean, very, very gently used. Another thing that tells you it was never used, look at this cup holder. This, now these cup holders are, are the only cup holder in the car. 
these little rubber or, or yeah, rubber, uh, you know, pieces here are usually dried out and all worn out from people using it. I doubt this cup holder was used very many times, even inside the console. Absolutely gorgeous all throughout. Whoops. Carpeting. Beautiful. It has the original litter bin. My wife never knew what that was until I told her. All right. Now, let's dive behind the wheel of this beautiful Cadillac Brome. All right. Behind the wheel of this 92 Cadillac. I always like to show you what I have for trinkets and keys and stuff. And we'll start with the keys. I have many keys. Like, a lot. A lot of keys. Um, I have two sets of original gold Cadillac keys. And then we have, I think, two sets of GM, original GM, the GM Mark of Excellence uh, keys. Also, like the last Cadillac I had, where'd they go? They're somewhere. I have the key punch outs. You can see the little punch outs there with the code on them. All right, so we'll start this up. Pop one of those gold keys in the ignition. And another cool thing, when you know you got a nice tight ignition and good, not worn out keys, you got the door chime to still work on this one. All right. Key on. You see all the lights come on behind the telltale strip. Fuel injected. A Chevy 350. Kicks right over. 59,875 miles uh, on this car. Uh, other things that we have is the hubcap key. You can see how nice and clean that is. This is the dark brown. And just a little lesson for you all, these are color coded. Uh, so the cap represents the color. On the side of the barrel here, you can see DB for dark brown. And then on the little key part, you see another DB for dark brown. Orange would have an orange cap and an O and an O. Red, R, red cap, R, blue, green, yellow, white, etc., etc. Now it's pretty cool not to veer off the subject. But I just bought, I buy these whenever I can because every now and again I get cars where they're missing. Uh, or I collect them when I can. And I bought a new old stock in the box one. It was a red cap. And it had uh, R on the shaft here. But it had O for the key, the actual insert here. So I think it was like a defect or something. Um, so it's basically useless. I mean, it's good for an O, but it has R stamped on it. It's got a red cap. Anyways, I thought that was kind of cool. It's probably sitting in some GM dealer as a return for 30 years. 1992 Cadillac Brome 5.7 liter uh, V8 engine. Cotillion white over dark blue leather. Uh, sold new and delivered to Vic Alfonso Cadillac. Built in Arlington, Texas. Uh, option list. Quite short, but um, very important options are checked off here. The D. Elegans Brome leather seating area. Wire disc caps for $445. Uh, 5.7 liter TBI V8 engine. This is the one that kicks me all the time. $250 upgrade. Very, very short money for them. Uh, automatic day night mirror, 110. Total options, only 3,200. Uh, but a sticker in 1992 money, 35,500, which I put into a calculator and it seemed like crazy, but I put into a calculator online um, what that would be in today's money. It was like $76,000. Uh, this is like an interior build sheet for the assembly line. This is under the driver's seat in the cushion. I retrieve those when I service the um, recliners. Original owner's manual as well. We're going to pop the trunk. And we're going to pop the hood. Taking a dive to the back here to show you that beautiful i'd say four three to four body trunk definitely not a six body trunk uh, like the town cars are but really really clean throughout have all the original floor mats mini donut spare and even underneath the floor mats we have the original trunk uh mat bottom trunk mat uh gasket is in nice shape this car does not have the door locking feature for the gas lid here uh, but it does still have the little tab where you stick your finger in there to pull it down, which is near impossible to find on these cars anymore. The original um, 
parts or option code tag uh, base clear. There's your uh, U8554, um, beautiful cotillion white. Very, very clean throughout here. Excuse me. Close this down. Show you the power trunk pull down feature. Works perfectly. Dive under the hood here. Even under the hood of this car is in phenomenal shape. Um, just super, super clean throughout. Now the wire that I was referring to for this hood ornament, one of the things I will mention um, is this has got a little bit of a looseness to it. Unfortunately, I don't think you can tighten it up because of that uh, mechanism. It's kind of hard to see back there, but it's essentially a mechanism, not the original setup. But it's, it's firm, it doesn't go anywhere but it has that um, extra wiring here to tap in with a fusible link, uh, and that is for the hood ornament alarm, as they call it. AC Delco battery, brand new AC Delco AC compressor. AC has just been all retrofitted, new AC Delco uh, alternator, water pump. Uh, this car had a ton of service work done by the collector I purchased the car from, uh, not from me. All stuff that I would normally do to these cars. I was very excited to get this car because I didn't have to do all that stuff. Uh, I did an alternator, water pump, upper and lower hoses, AC compressor, retrofit, obviously, uh, new Delco battery. Uh, he put the tires on the car, did front brakes, did rear shoes, wheel cylinders, uh, new radiator, uh, did front wheel bearings, probably went overkill there. That's usually not something that's needed. Uh, front shocks were done on this car, fuel pump, uh, fuel sender, fuel filter, obviously oil changes and whatnot. Uh, when I got this car in, I serviced the two power recliners, uh, and then I had the exhaust replaced from the cat back all the way to the tailpipe. Still had the original exhaust on it, and it was just starting to have a few pinholes through it. But take a look under the hood here, how nice and clean. I mean, not even really any surface rust anywhere which is again real hard to find on these cars. The uh, fuel injected cap there in great shape. You don't usually see that on these cars. Usually they get a little bit of surface rust to them. Again, brand new AC Delco. Uh, AC compressor, retrofitted. Everything is working. I mean, look at how clean. You can see the anodizing still on some of these these uh, fittings, just stuff that you don't see anymore. And I do appreciate that they replaced the hoses, but kept the original hose clamps. Ask me how I know if you bring a car like this to a Cadillac LaSalle Grand National, they will deduct points if you do not have the original hose clamps. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> Anyways, we'll do a real quick, quick, quick. I know this video is super, super long already. But now that it's not in the blistering sun, I'll show you just a real quick walk around. You can see the beautiful gloss on that paint. Absolutely beautiful throughout. Look at that. That is stunning. Absolutely stunning. And hard to replicate. Near impossible to replicate. Beautiful shine on that top, all natural. Come around the back here. I'm not even gonna ask for forgiveness for the length of this video just because this car deserves every bit of documentation that it gets. Let me know what you think down in the comments on this car and if you agree with my claim of mileage. Uh, essentially, you know, basically comes down to, you know, how you treat a car, where it's kept. These cars, they're only the same when they come off the assembly line. After they leave Arlington, Texas, 30 years ago, 
They're in different climates. They get treated differently. They get maintained differently. So none of these cars are ever the same. And that's why at this stage, um, you see a little odd inconsistency. They wear and they age a little differently. Uh, like that gasket in the door, driver's door. Um, you know, but it's basically like how you take care of yourself. You know, you got Jennifer Aniston over here, who's a knockout at age 50. Uh, then you have 50 year olds who are not so much knockouts. You know, it's just in the genes and how you take care of yourself. And, you know, uh, anyways, <laughs> so I don't get muted or censored or bashed at. Let's take it for a spin. All right, let's take her for a spin now. Bring her up on the highway. Coming through. Turn a little bit of uh, cold air on here. Our automatic climate control. Turn that on low. Turn signals. I love the sound that the signals make on these cars. It's kind of like a weird, I don't know, metal tinny sound, but very bromy. Take it on the highway. Cruise switched on. Is the auto rear view mirror, auto dimming rear view mirror that is. Now, as I suppress our sneeze, <laughs> these cars aren't rocket ships. I mean, even the 350, you can see here. I mean, she gets up and moves, but it's a Chevy 350 from 1990. I'm not mashing it. We're doing 64, getting ready to merge. Mash it down. You know, she starts moving along even further, but they're great cruising cars. And you know what? That's why I say the difference between the 350 to the 91, 92, 5 liter 305 is not super, you know, it's like not like you got a rocket ship if you got the 350. These two fuel injected uh, drive lines are just great drive lines for these cars. Uh, just great cruising drive lines. We'll see there. Cruise control is engaged. Oops, sorry. Looking at the cruise light. <laughs> Whoopsie, yep. Cruise is engaged. Um, just a really well sorted, well kept Cadillac Brome. Um, you know, when I got this car in, there was like a brief moment I said, Ooh, I should sell my 90 with 59,000 miles and keep this one. Um, you know, but with me, I like driving my cars and making the memories that I make with them. And that's something that I cannot replicate. You know, it'd be nice to keep the nicer version, which is this car, um, over my, you know, very lightly lacquer checked 90 Brome Elegance. But I've had that car since before my wife and I date dated. That car took us on dates. That car took my wife to our wedding and took us from our wedding to our honeymoon. Uh, you know, we went and uh, rescued our dog with that car. We took it on our one year anniversary. You know, my daughter as a baby rode in that car. So that to me is priceless. And I, I it's, it'd be nice to upgrade, obviously, and keep the nicer car. A lot of people ask me that. Do you, do you just keep the nicest ones? No, I don't because the ones that I have had, I've had for so long that I have the memories and those are things that I cannot replicate. I mean, just like the interiors of these cars and the condition of these cars, you can't replicate the memories you cannot bring back. So I leave that beautiful white brome just sitting there in the corner and for the next time I take her out and I'm gonna let the next person uh, start to make memories with this brome. I hate sitting at this light, the car's whiz right by me. 
Any questions about this Cadillac, 978-930-1004 is my number. Anthony here at Specialty Motor Cars in Pelham, New Hampshire. And like I always say, do not let distance stop you from getting a dream car like this in your driveway. Give me a call. I can handle all the shipping. I ship this car thousands and thousands of miles in clothes from Vancouver, Washington to Pelham, New Hampshire. And it's ready to go either back to the West Coast, stay local, Whoever the lucky person is to call me and purchase this car um, and call it their own, I can help you get it shipped right to your front door. 978-930-1004 is my number. Uh, definitely check me out on Specialty Motor Cars NH on Instagram uh, for all my sneak peeks and updates, my day-to-day. -day. Uh, also on my Facebook page, uh, more there, I guess, than Instagram, but both of them I use pretty frequently. Uh, on a daily basis go over to my website specialtymotorcars.net for all the still pictures of this car uh, also you can purchase some specialty motor car swag uh, coffee mugs sweatshirts puppa bear shirts all that good stuff all over there as well now the part that everybody wants to hear is what's the price on this car price on this car is going to be $29,995 like i said throughout this video one of my finest offerings, even though the mileage is a little higher than some of my lowest mileage offerings. Again, going back to the, they're not the same after they leave the factory. This car lived a truly cherished, pampered, in the right climate, the best climate. And now I know, uh, seeing firsthand, uh-oh, that the Pacific Northwest is a great place to find these old classics. Thanks everybody for watching, totally appreciate it. Hit that like button down below, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and let me know what you think down in the comments of this beautiful 1992 Cadillac Brome D'Elegance. See you on the next one.